and welcome to our Curse Plays Escape from Tarkov. Alright, so we have an outskirts extract here on the woods. Now, we've got quite a few things that we need to uh, put down. bunch of stuff that we need to put down on the uh, on the dock. Okay. I kind of know where I'm at. I'm in an area I don't want to be. So there's like a scab spawn point like right here. This should be a fairly simple run. There's the barrels there. Now it's going to take quite a bit of time to stash these items. one. There we go, this is a little better. It's not going to stop anybody from rolling up on us, though. To be honest, though, this is kind of a brilliant place to put a quest con objective. This is kind of like a place that um... No one's going to go of their own volition. Like, why would anybody come out here on the stock, surrounded by high uh, high spots that, like, this place is a trap. But at least we're getting it done.
You've been there the whole time. Let that asshat's body go. There the whole time. No scope. Two hits. Plus, that's AK 74U. We can get that one kitted out identically to the one we already have. I wonder if any kills we're getting right now, because we have to get kills that are basically at night. Uh, we're here very early in the morning. So... I wonder if that one counted. I'm hearing voices. hearing stuff happening all the way over there. the scav house. We're going to see if we can't milk a couple more kills here.
down. Oh, that one was... That one felt good. I love that one just right. Oh, the temptation to go check those bodies. It's real. We're gonna do a greed. Don't come in the scab house often. Because you, yep, you seem like exactly what I thought you are. I want this slick. I'm gonna take the risk that all that stuff lying near me was, uh, it was not. That was definitely at me. Just don't know where he's at. I know he's over there somewhere. This is why I don't come up to the scab house, everybody.
That's what I get for wanting to carry out level 6 armor. I'm glad I'm domed that one guy in the head. Otherwise he'd have been a problem. wanted that other guy's stuff, but I just couldn't make it happen. Okay, this is the minefield at the back of the map. There's the extract of the car. I'd probably have a chance at counter sniping that guy, but the AI has better visibility than me and low visibility uh, conditions like this. here. This is outskirts, yes? crap would it have been if I'd have gotten all the way there and I'd have picked the wrong uh, extract. Oh, it just wasn't far enough. That would have been a headshot. That would have counted towards uh, um, what was it? Backpack, sure. Yeah, that would have counted towards a shooter born in heaven. Let's see. It did not, because it has to be over 125 meters away. Ugh. That's why I don't think I'm going to be getting that one done. Ragman. Finish this one for you. Give me a lot of hats. Survive and extract from interchange seven times. Oh, stash two Giselles. Ooh. But then uh, he'll sell body armor to me at level four, which I'm not going to get for another nine, nine levels. Bunch of hats. As you can see, we've gone through a lot of the cash that we made off that one sale. But I think it was for a good cause. Okay.
That slick is pristine too. Oh. Keeping that. Okay, so we can get rid of these now. That goes in there. Sadly, I was unable to get that other guy's dog tags. I mean, you weren't using great ammo. M80? Yeah. That one was empty. Oh, you really weren't using great ammo. SMW key. I have one of those. That can go. That's a free AK. sell this. Sell the mustache, we already have one. Now I can start going through this. I think we need these computer parts. Yes, ammo, not great. Okay, this will only fit on the Remington 700, so that's not something I need. Could be better than something I already have, so I'll keep that for right now. That'll go on a Remington. This is kill his helmet without the uh, without the front uh, thing. That thing will probably sell for a lot. What's this? That's like a 45 degree flashlight mount. It's kind of dumb. Then we'll basically repair this for free and sell it off. That's a good level 4 carrier though. Let's see. Spec that compared to what I've got on. So, container size, mine's slightly, slightly bigger. However, this one changes movement speed and turning speed a lot less and penalizes your ergonomics a lot less. So, oh, this thing, ooh, just only covers the thorax though, so it leaves everything else uncovered, whereas I think this one's a thorax only as well, oh, this is arms and thorax. Whereas this one is stomach and thorax. So, i eh, give it up a little bit. And that's it. Gone through all the SVD ammo so far. Now. If I would just accept this, this would have been done already.
been done two times over. Bringing our money back up. Okay. Okay, so that's down. Or done. Continuing. Okay. Get the rubles in here. This is, uh, this is all starting to, to fix itself a little bit. Okay. Let's see what tasks we can do next. He wants us to stash stuff. We could try this one. Seven more hours until this is complete. Need RAM for these, that's why I've been keeping those. Okay. Is there anything here I particularly need? So, when I was uh, when I was about to uh, log off last time, uh, well, right after I logged, well, when I stopped recording, I went ahead and came through here to look through what he had. He actually had a thick items case, but I didn't buy it because I, things like that I do want to buy on uh, on camera. Ah, uh, it's a vector in 45. That might be interesting. Nothing too interesting here. Except for this. This is basically the best foreground in the game. Statistics wise. Um, is recoil minus 2 and ergonomics plus 8. So this is a... Well, I say it's best, but... There's one that's better recoil, but worse ergonomics, and there's one that's better ergonomics, but worse recoil. 
So this is the best of both worlds. So that's my, uh, this is my preferred one now. It's actually more preferred over the angled force grip. So I actually have one of these in uh, IRL. Um, they're not really all they're cracked up to be. Like this was the bit, these were the big things for a while because uh, you had the straight down foregrip, you know, those were big. And then uh, they started coming out with these. And the idea behind these is that when you hold your arm out at an arm's rifle length, at, a, at the rifle length, like it's kind of um, not comfortable uh, to, uh, to grip your rifle with the foregrip because uh, what you want on a rifle. So let's uh, let's take not not a rifle like this one. Let's take a sniper. Let's take a like a let's take something middle of the road. Let's go with this Mark 47 with this mutant. So imagine you're holding this rifle. Your hands here. And you gotta hold your other hand out here. So what you do is you're creating a pivot point between your shoulder and your and the hand and your hand out here on the foregrip or on the forend. Okay. So and this is like kind of talking about like you know how you know how the shooting works generally. So what you're doing is you're actually creating a a pivot point between here and here. It's not really a pivot. I don't really know what the word is. But uh, any movement here, the more this moves out here, so like the more the rifle goes, you know, slightly any direction uh, out at the muzzle as compared to where this is, um, like the greater, like uh, the greater like the difference is, like the further down range you are, the further from the muzzle, if that angle is just slightly off, the uh, the more you're going to miss. Okay, you know, basic aiming things, right? So if you have your hand here, you create a pivot point here. So if you have like a, if you're holding this by the, uh, by the magazine, right, which some people would do, they'd hold it by the magazine. So you're creating uh, the pivot point uh, is here. So the farther and uh, so like it moves on that pivot point. So the further out your hand is out here, uh, the less by degrees it's going to pivot in one way or another. I hope uh, I hope this makes sense. It's a lot easier to like show people holding an actual rifle, but we can't really adjust our grips and stuff to like show this being done the wrong way. So the further out you hold your hand, uh, there's an angle that feels comfortable for your hand to be at. And when uh, the military taught me how to shoot, and the military is who taught me how to shoot, um, they had us do what's called the pop can grip, where you let the front of the rifle lay in your hand and you grip it with the same amount of force as you would a pop can. Like just in normal, um, you know, if you pick up a pop can and you're not thinking about it. And I'm sipping on Mountain Dew as we do this. Um, so, uh, when you have a straight down grip, uh, it actually makes it easier uh, to, uh, you know, move the uh, move the rifle like back and forth. It actually ma makes you a little less accurate if you care about accuracy, but uh, it creates a natural pivot point to move uh, back and forth on this plane like this, uh, centered around wherever that grip is. So the angled foregrip, or the idea behind it is that you can put your hand out here, but it's not gonna be as uncomfortable. And you can still use that pop can grip, uh, which is going to have less of an effect and the fatigue of your arm is gonna have less of an effect on the, on the rifle. But uh, I just have always found that the pop can grip is better. However, a straight down foregrip, if you're doing CQB stuff with a uh, with a much shorter rifle, man, that is a godsend for being able to control your rifle because you don't have to worry about shooting long range. You don't have to worry about like the drawbacks of that. 
So like that's kind of like, oh, there's the angled foregrips and there's this weird angled foregrip. But uh, the idea is you put this out so far on your rifle and the natural angle of your hand as you rest your rifle on it matches this angle. So, hope that makes sense. But uh, if you're gonna have like a foregrip, the stubby shorter ones, they feel a whole lot better, by the way, than having like a long big one. Because we have like these grit pods, and uh, them were them were no bueno. They were big, they were heavy, they weren't really suited to, and like you would break the like little pop out bipod on them really easy. Okay. So let us let's let's spend some of our some of our money. Graphics card. Let's get like ten of them. Let's go to our hideout. Let's see what the difference is here. If we feed more of these. Oh, I only got nine. That cut out several hours. Yeah, let's just get the other six. The other six more we need. I really do wonder how much that cut all that, uh, that this down by. So hopefully we can get more, uh, Bitcoins faster. I tend to, uh, record a bunch of, a bunch in one day, so let's prep for our next task. So this is on like lighthouse and chemical and all those I still have to look up which one of those I should do Still need to just kill scavs on customs. Anyways, I think that's gonna be it for today. Not really a lot going on here. So I'm gonna look up what we're going to need to do for some of these quests. And uh, I'll be back next time. Thank you for watching. This is Arcurus, signing off.